Welcome to the latest and final episode of Athlete to Athlete here on Sportsnet. My name is Arash Madani. Over the last number of weeks, we have gathered some of our country's top high-performance stars in association with the Canadian Olympic Committee. These competitors have told us their stories of life during the pandemic, how they're adjusting to the postponement of the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games, and opening up on the relevant social issues of the day. We end the series by connecting two great hockey players who have admired one another from afar. Over and over again throughout his career, Shane Doan answered the call for Canada at the World Championships. He won five medals wearing the Maple Leaf and was also on the 2006 Olympic team. Four years after that, in Vancouver, Marie-Philippe Poulain became a household name when she scored the only two goals in the gold medal game over the Americans to win it for Canada. At Sochi 2014, it was Poulain again, with the golden goal to stand atop the podium. She captained the 2018 Pyeongchang team to silver as well. Reflecting back on all those games is where Doan and Poulain begin the conversation on athlete to athlete. Your three Olympics, what's your favorite? Or not favorite, but favorite moment? <laughs> Great question. Um, obviously, 2010 was quite special. I was in Vancouver, like, first time. Uh, I mean, my whole family there, being able to win on their home soil, to be honest, was uh, one of the best moments for sure. But, like, the last two, like, I feel like, if, even if you talk about those games, those are, like, fairy tale. Like, you know, Sochi, we came back from behind. Even the last one, I know we lost, like, and it was hard. Like, I'm not going to lie, like, it, it was a tough moment, but... Um, just putting women's hockey on the map and like you can tell how close it is like every game you have the chance to play even the last world championship like Finland made it to the final we won bronze and just you can see women's hockey like stepping up and every country like improving and it, it's fun to see it's fun to be part of it and but 2010 I couldn't ask for a better start to my career those games were like literally games that are like iconic games what was that like I mean, obviously, the shootout was tough, uh, but at the same time, those games, any time you get a chance to compete at the highest level of thing, it's got it's so special. And to to be on that three times must have been, I mean, it's just got to be amazing. It is amazing. Like, obviously, like, you've been there, you wore that jersey, and I don't know, there's so much pride, and it's so, like, not only, you don't only represent yourself, but there's so many, like, for us, there's pioneers that really paved the way for a lot of us and for women's hockey and when you wear that jersey like it's funny because like obviously you train with Hockey Canada you train so hard and you get to the Olympics and it's you become a family and you get to know the other athletes and you get to know their their like what they go through and at the end of the day like all athletes they, they have their ups they have their downs and mentally physically like it's hard and obviously it's fun to talk about it and when you get there you go watch them you watch it on tv you you make friendship, and that's something that's so, so fun to be part of. And obviously, Canada, we, we could ask for a better country, to be honest, like representing your country at the highest level. It's uh, so re rewarding. Sure. What do you think about uh, having the NHL players back on the Olympic roster? I think that's unbelievable. I, I'm The Olympics are bigger than hockey. And so I, I think it's, a, it's like a global thing for – I think for the players to have a moment to be part of that is special. I think the athletes village is so cool. Like that is an experience that I just wish everyone could do. Um, I know how important it was to the, to the app, to the players to get that. And, and I, and I understand the owner's argument that gets tough, but um, I think that was great for the league and for the players to come together. I think it's great for our sport. That's good for it. And, and, and to go and be part of that is, is pretty special. Let's say for you, like, obviously you dream to play the NHL, you guys have that, but what point do you think about, oh, that would be amazing to actually be part of Canada? Is there, like, a switch in your career? Is it, like, when you see it, like, obviously the last Olympic, there was no NHL player, but at what, like, at what age, let's say, would you say, like, you're like, wow, okay, that would be quite amazing to also be part of that in Canada. Yeah, I remember watching when – the three games against Russia and, and the six, five games and Mario scoring the goal. 
I remember I was sitting in my uncle's base watching the game by myself because they had like everyone was somewhere else and I was went over there to watch it. Um, I thought I might get a shot at the World Junior team. Uh, I ended up getting go playing in Winnipeg and they didn't let me go to the World Juniors that year. Um, and so then I, my career kind of struggled and I kind of forgot all about it. As much as I wanted to play for Team Canada, it seemed like such a pipe dream that it wasn't real, really mm -hmm. realistic. And we had a really good playoff series against St. Louis. And that was kind of the first time I'd started to get in a, I had, it was fairly high, it was a high pick. And then I kind of dropped off. And then I had some success in the playoffs. And Tom Rennie from Hockey Canada called me. And I was like, oh my gosh, yes, I'll, whatever. Like, yeah, what do you want me to do? I'll go wherever you want me to go. I didn't think this was going to happen for me. Sean Burke told me one time, because playing in the world championships can sometimes be tough at the end of the season. And Sean Burke told me one time, he's like, there'll come a day when no one wants you to play. So every time they ask you, go. So that was kind of my <laughs> theory on it, as I, I went every time they could ask me. You have so much experience. And like, I feel like one question I would ask you would be like, what would you tell your 20, 2003 captain? Like if you were in 2017, you were the captain for many years. What would you tell yourself that? as your first time captain? That, well, you know what? That was um, the, the one thing that I've learned that I would try to tell myself more at the end is you didn't get chosen out of a hat. Like for a long time at the beginning, I thought like once you're a captain, you want to, uh, you want to prove that you should be captain. And, and then you really start to struggle. Because it's like every shift you have to prove you're captain or every decision you have to be a cap like you have to make a great captain's decision. And then as I got older, I realized, well, I'd already proven myself and that's why they picked me to be the captain. So I just have to continue doing what I was doing. But in the beginning, that's the hardest thing. And especially, especially, you know, when you, you, you want, and my personality is want to do, you know, you want to impress people. And so you're trying even harder to impress him and you just completely fall apart and you completely fail. But that would probably be my biggest thing is just relax. It's, 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 you, you've already, you've done everything you needed to do to get named the captain. So now just be yourself. And the more comfortable you are with being yourself, the more people will tend to follow you. The more you try to be someone else, the less people follow you. What has changed the most from you for in the beginning of your, what would you say coming in to starting with the, with the senior team to now, what do you think your biggest um, improvement has been? And was there anything that you want to improve on? I was lucky enough, like I said, 18 and I could tell right now that I'm getting sore by the day, Sean. Like it's just, uh, you're getting older, but no, I think one thing, um, I think it's getting so fast. Like, women's hockey is getting so fast, and the, the young ones coming up, it, it's so amazing to watch. And like, like you mentioned earlier, it's like, am I good enough? Like, am I okay to keep going? And those are always the question. You always want to, like, be the best you can be. And sometimes, like, mentally, you, you ask yourself who you are. But, um, I mean, throughout the years, you learn your body, too. Like, obviously, I'm someone that always want to push myself, like, in the gym, uh, off the ice, on the ice. And sometimes, like, the last couple of months, like, with the COVID-19, I think it, it took time for me to realize, like, that I need to train diff differently. Like, obviously, I need to change a little bit. Like, I'm getting older. It's a little bit harder on the, on the body, but it's true. Like, it's like you, you wake up in the morning, you're hurting everywhere, but maybe I need to change a little bit in my training and my mentality. Maybe I don't need to do as much as I, I, as I used to do before. And, just learning that, I think it's huge. And on the ice, obviously, I always want to improve on everything. Yeah, like the skating, I think that that's huge. But I think one thing, like uh, the shooting, I think that's something that I've been working on a little bit and having the chance to to practice that, even with the guys, it's always fun for sure. Watching your game, it's it's so fun to watch your game. Your strength is amazing. Like the way that you play the game is, I, I'm an, I'm just I'm a big fan, and I just think that yeah. it's so cool. To, to, to actually get to talk to you and, and to I will definitely be bragging about this to everybody because oh, uh, oh, me too that's for sure that's quite amazing there he is Shane Doan starstruck getting to meet Mary Philippe Poulain virtually anyway 
true respect from a couple of Canadian hockey legends with one another. You know, that has been so much of the theme from this entire Athlete to Athlete series. We've had legends connecting with the current generation, friends reuniting, having not seen one another since they were in the Olympic Village together. And then there was the story of Canada's Athlete of the Year being inspired by the perseverance of a teammate. If you've missed any of our episodes, they are available on sportsnet.ca and Sportsnet's YouTube channel. We hope to see your country's top high-performance stars compete in Tokyo next summer. And we thank you for watching Athlete to Athlete.